What's up everyone? Today I wanted to go ahead and spend some time talking about some expectations versus reality since I've now been working full time as a software engineer for Microsoft in their high performance computing group, which is a subgroup within their larger Azure cloud business. So I have five expectations that I'll talk about and then I'll briefly touch on the reality and my experience thus far. Let's get started. The first expectation I want to talk about is cutting edge technology. Now without a doubt, joining Microsoft and specifically the high performance computing group, I expected to be exposed to the latest developments in the industry. And I think generally that is true. I'm far more aware. So going into two years ago, I had absolutely no idea what the latest developments were in high performance computing. I had barely heard of OpenAI, which is kind of crazy at the time. And now I'm much more well versed in what the latest GPU offerings and developments are, both internally and from NVIDIA, which is obviously the top dog. However, I do want to caveat and say that just because my team is the HPC team doesn't mean I actually get to run workloads and experiments using the latest and greatest cutting edge technology. My team is generally responsible for maintaining the quality of these high performance nodes that go out to customers like OpenAI. So that doesn't mean I necessarily code in Python and do AI, HPC, you know, uh, training, LLMs, things like that. That would be probably more akin to like an AI research team within Microsoft. And a lot of the actual code and work that we do is not new technology at all. So like a lot of the code that we write is in PowerShell or you know, .NET C Sharp, which I guess you might expect uh, being that we are Microsoft. So the second expectation is internal tooling. And like I already touched upon, the .NET framework is very popular. And even though we are an AI slash HPC team, Python is not nearly as popular as PowerShell for scripting purposes, just because I think a lot of the legacy system and existing technology within Microsoft internally uses PowerShell and is intended for PowerShell. The other thing I'd like to touch upon is internal projects. So I did kind of look forward to being exposed to internal systems and projects within Microsoft for developers that are not available to the public. But I would say the reality didn't live up to the expectation there because these internal projects, since they are not external facing, there's less support, less documentation. The user experience is usually not as pretty, but for the most part, they do work. Something else to note is we do not get MacBooks. If you're someone that prefers a Mac over a PC, generally speaking, Microsoft is probably not the place for you. I definitely was one of those people, but I can be converted, so I have definitely gotten used to my ThinkPad, but I will say just the screen brightness of this MacBook versus my ThinkPad is pretty night and day, so I can't say I really work outside ever just because the light is too bright for the screen. So I would say the internal tooling at Microsoft, expectation versus reality, reality definitely leaves a little bit to be desired. The third expectation that I'll cover is technical competence. And when I say technical competence, I mean the ability, or I should say the opportunity to work alongside other engineers that are very skilled and smart. I shouldn't just say engineers, this applies to technical PMs and architects, managers, etc. Out of the five expectations that I'll cover today, this is probably the one that has been met the most or surpassed the expectation even. I know in the past at IBM I was sometimes frustrated that my manager was more of a people manager and didn't really understand the technical problems that I was facing, but I definitely don't have that problem here at Microsoft. The fourth expectation is work-life balance. I know that some big tech companies have a reputation of being a bit of a toxic culture. Thankfully, Microsoft is not one of them, at least to my knowledge. And I would say the work-life balance has been really good. I would say it's right at the expectation I had. So we do have the discretionary time off, meaning it's supposed to be unlimited vacation. Obviously, it's up to your, you and your manager's discretion on what is acceptable for this discretionary time off. 
But I would say I'm definitely happy with the work-life balance that I've received thus far and hopefully it stays this way. Now last but not least, the fifth and final expectation that I'll cover is compensation, career growth, perks. I'm kind of just going to combine it all into one expectation. So as far as perks and compensation, I think generally speaking, the expectation is that it would be really, really high since Microsoft is doing so well financially with the stock performance. Now, of course, we do get paid as part of our total compensation in stock, so I guess that should be factored in. But as far as the salaries, I think generally speaking, it is a lot lower than people expect just because you hear Microsoft and it's big tech, but compared to Meta, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, Tesla, etc., the total, com total compensation is definitely lower than the others in that kind of magnif Magnificent Seven or big tech range. Now, I also don't want to complain too much because obviously if you're a software engineer, you are doing all right financially, generally speaking, no matter what. But I do just want to point that out as far as expectations versus reality. For career growth, I'm quite happy. I went from software engineer one to software engineer two in like a year and a half or so. So I'm level 61 and that's kind of what you would expect for someone of my experience, though I think a lot of level 61s get there a lot faster. So I would say that's around what you would expect. As far as compensation jumps, that was 5% increase. So not a very big jump in base salary or anything, just more of a title and career growth type thing. And as far as perks, it is definitely lower than you would expect. I kind of would expect to get, you know, Microsoft hoodies, t-shirts, like a Yeti, uh, things like that. But I think, I mean, you can kind of attribute it to Microsoft's financial success as well is they are pretty cheap, honestly, in regards to the perks and swag. They're not paying for people to travel and go to conferences. They're not paying for a new Patagonia backpack or a, a jacket or quarter zip, etc. Pretty much at Microsoft, my experience is you get paid your paycheck and you work and that's about it. You're not getting a ton of free swag or outside benefits in general. We do get $1,500 a year just to spend on health, wellness, and hobbies, which is very nice. But just saying, you know, in comparison to some of the other big tech companies, we're not getting hats and merch all the time, stuff like that. I think that wraps up my five expectations versus reality. Generally speaking, I am very happy at Microsoft. I just want to be clear that I'm not complaining or anything, but just pointing out some expectations and my experience thus far. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.